How would you like us to view referees? Just more, more understanding and more empathy. So, again, yes, mistakes are made and, and we're far from perfect. Far from perfect. But there's many other facets that um, contribute to um, a result of a football match. And so maybe reflect on, before you start trying to blame one individual, maybe try and consider. Very difficult, I appreciate, objectively after a team's lost. But, you know, consider the, uh, the things that go into what's been decided. Um, and and try and understand why something's been been done. So there you have it. Anthony Taylor is calling for more empathy, more understanding. We will give you more un un empathy, Mr. Taylor, if you were not such a biased referee. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about Anthony Taylor, VAR, and bad decisions which have cost Chelsea in four domestic cup finals. So welcome to another edition of Burton Ballers. Welcome to the Burton Ballers. Ain't got no time for no stallers, yeah. We are the risers, we're not the fallers. Our channel is growing wider and taller. Yeah, we're here to give you the news about your dear beloved blues, yeah. So if you like this YouTube channel, like, subscribe, and turn on that bell. Yeah. First of all, I'd like to congratulate uh, Anthony Taylor for coming out and giving this interview uh, with Jake Humphries from the uh, BT Sport. Um, I will put the link in below. It's actually a podcast which they did. So if you want to watch the full podcast then, then then the link's going to be in the description below um i've watched excerpts of it um i want to listen to the full interview later but i've taken a few bits from it and um that clip i just showed you was was, was taken from from um part of that interview so i was actually it's strange actually because i was going to make a video concerning var and referees and chelsea in domestic finals it's not Chelsea have lost the last four domestic finals that they've played in. So, if we look at, um, if we contrast that with what they've done in Europe, they've won their last two Champions League finals, they've won the uh, Super Cup, and they've won the World Club Cup. But, as I said before, four domestic finals and they haven't won one. Okay, um, it's not just referees. It's all about how you perform on the day because you can't always depend on refereeing decisions. Um, but one thing I always ask for when we play a game of football, I say there's one, two things I want from my team. One is that they give a good account of themselves and two, we don't lose to any controversial situation um, decisions. It, we, you know, we lose because we, we the, the, uh, the, the, our opponents were better on the day, and all the last four games we, we've played in the in finals, we've been talking about refereeing decisions, and it's not because we're wearing blue tinted glasses. This is because the facts are there for everybody to see. All right, let's take them one by one. Arsenal, we lost that um, in, in Conte when Conte was going for the double. We lost that match. Was it 2-0? I can't remember now. Um, but the the goal they, they scored, the Sanchez actually handballs it. It wasn't even a handball. He's taken both hands. He's, I thought he was playing basketball. I think the referee thought he was playing basketball, not football. He was that referee? Yes, Anthony Taylor. And then he he booked Victor Moses for simulation or something, got him sent off. So he got a red card in that final. Fast forward a couple of years ago, later, um, and asked, we play Arsenal again in the FA Cup final. Anthony Taylor, the referee again. Although it shouldn't be allowed because he's already refereed an FA Cup match, but they cited COVID as a reason why they gave him this FA Cup. So he refereed this match. And again, more controversy. We had the Kovacic sending off when he actually clearly got the ball. And we had uh, the goalkeeper, Martinez, handle the ball outside of the penalty box. Nothing given. So 
two big calls again. So rather than concentrating on the football, we're talking about the poor refereeing decisions by Anthony Taylor. Then last season, we play in the FA Cup against Leicester and we have that um, marginal offside for um, Ben Chilwell. Again, where we, we look at that decision and it's more his arm, which is offside, not this part of the body. And it was a tight call. We don't know where they're drawing the lines from. I'm hearing people saying... VA um, offside decisions are accurate, but it's only, it's not an accurate thing. We are they drawing these lines? It's not like um, a photo finish in athletics, for instance, or ball tracking in cricket. It's not as accurate as that. The, the, these people are drawing these lines. I don't know where they're getting these lines from. And the little, the, you know, the little dot things what come down, you know, where they're trying to find out to the nth degree about whether it's offside or not. And even this season, I thought they said they were going to have thicker lines to give more the benefit of the doubt to the, to the attackers. But as we saw on Sunday in the um, League Cup, again, Lukaku from the tightest of margins. And again, we don't know where they've drawn these lines from. It looks like his arm rather than um, his sleeve, which is what's offside. And you, you cannot score with your arm. So I still think that's subjective. And you know what? It took them 20 seconds to make up, come up with that decision. When they were looking at the um, Liverpool one, that took them about two minutes. They were dissecting it, trying to find a way to make it onside. But with our one, they just drew up some line. They, they managed to draw these lines in 10 seconds or so to suit their agenda and say it was offside. Again, I said, it's not sale grapes for me. It's just laying down the facts. Let me talk. I'm going to look at some referees now. And, and don't tell me that they haven't got a bias. Um, and Anthony Taylor in this interview said there's no biases. They don't come in with any preconceived ideas. They're not influenced by the crowd or anything or by what they read in the paper. But they are human. So don't tell me that they're not influenced. They are going to, referees are going to come out and say that. They're not going to say, yeah, yeah, we're influenced because it's going to, um, it's going to uh, have more uh, attentions on the referees. So he's not going to come out and, 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 and say things like that. Let's be honest. But, you know, you, you do have that unconscious bias. Don't tell me you don't. Right, here are the facts. I deal in facts. Chelsea has the lowest success rate against any club under Anthony Taylor. Out of 38 games, Chelsea have only won 18. Percentage-wise, this rounds up to just a win rate of 47%. Meanwhile, Manchester United has surprisingly won all 25 out of their 25 matches played under referee Anthony Taylor. And when it comes to the most lost matches under the watch of referee Anthony Taylor, Chelsea is the second on the list with 12 losses altogether. So every time we see Ante Taylor's name, we, as Chelsea fans, we say, oh no. And why? Because obviously these results, you know, we're seeing inconsistent performances by him. We're seeing tackles by other players which are going unpunished. Chelsea's first tackle, he gets, we get a card for. It's, it's things like that. You know, there's, for me, the best referees are the referees who go unnoticed. That's because no, they're doing a good job. That's why we're not calling their names all the time. Here's a couple of other um, referees that you definitely know the name of. And the first one is Mr. Chris Foy. Chris Foy, he gave six red cards to Chelsea in eight games that he refereed. And I think that was before, like, this, I'm looking at this um, stat, and I think that was before the Robin one we sent off Aaron Robin when he went into the crowd to celebrate after giving him a harsh yellow card in the first place. That was against Blackburn a few years ago. But six reds in eight games, Chris Foy. Don't tell me that there isn't a bias there. Mike Dean. <laughs> Everyone knows Mike Dean. Mike Dean has handed out nine red cards to Chelsea players. The most red cards he's handed out to any club. So, again, are they all deserved? Some of them, I'm not saying that they're not all deserved. Some, some, some are deserved. But if we look at it, not all of those red cards are deserved. Martin Atkinson is another one. Um, I remember that bad, bad challenge by Ashley Barnes on um, Matic. Didn't do anything. Um, and because of that, uh, Matic got angry. He shoved Ashley Barnes. He was quick to get his red card out for a shove, but he didn't do anything, not even a booking for Ashley Barnes for a leg breaker. And I've seen him refereeing some of our matches in the, in, 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 
uh, now and he lets a lot go. You know, teams can kick Chelsea to pit from pillar to post and he doesn't get his card out. When we do one foul, the card comes out immediately, you know. I know that other um, um, fans from other clubs may come out with um, other uh, incidences for, uh, against their club or for a particular referee. Um, I'll, you know, stick your comments in below for any referees that you feel has been you've been badly treated by from from, and I'll I'll do some research and dig in on that. But that's what the research I've done, and that's the stats I've come out with. So. It shouldn't be a case where you see a referee's name and you think, oh no, he's refereeing and he's bound to be a bad result, bad, bad decision. And nine times out of 10, you do get a bad decision against you. So why is that? Why is it that, you know, a certain referee, you know from the off that you're going to get a bad decision from? That is obviously a bias on their part. They're not going to admit it, but the facts are clear for all to see. Um, so what do you guys think? Do you think, who else, are there any referees that I haven't mentioned? Do you feel have got a grudge against Chelsea? We are, um, enemy, public enemy number one. Another thing, actually, what we need to do, we need to be more vocal. We saw that with Everton. Everton the other day had a terrible decision go against them and they demanded an apology from the, um, uh, chief of refereeing. His name escapes me at the moment. I can see his face. But I can't remember his name. But anyway, you guys know who he is. But he came out and offered an apology to Everton. And you know what it's going to do as well? That is not only, a lot of people are going to say, you know, that apology is nothing now. What good is it going to do to Everton? They lost the game. But it is, it will do them good because it will make future referees think twice when giving um, poor decisions against Everton, knowing that they'll be hard done by. And you know what? If we, took that same sort of a stance and asked the, que the question, to ask, you know, got, got to get the referee to publicly come out or the, the head of referee to publicly come out and um, make that apology. Then next time a referee match with many um, referees our game, then you're going to see that hopefully they're going to be more measured when making their decisions. Because it wasn't only the, the, the Lukaku decision, the, 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 how we didn't get, um, uh, Cater didn't get red carded for that challenge on Shalabar. And we've seen it before with Chelsea um, uh, players where horrific tackles haven't got red carded for. And my final thing is, as well, is, OK, Anthony Taylor, referees are human. Yeah, we know that. Referees do make mistakes. We know that. But... What we are seeing now is uh, incompetence in VAR. You know, I don't, I don't you know. Sometimes, you know, ref, I, I, I take your point. Referees are human. I take your point on that. And I take your point that, you know, they do make on-field errors. But VAR is there to clear up on-field errors. And the fact that VAR, they're looking at these incidences in slow motion many times and they're still coming up with a wrong decision. That's what's frustrating a lot of the supporters. Because in, in the, that interview you, you had, you said, you know, the fans were calling for VAR and now they're frustrated by VAR. We're not just frustrated by VAR. We're still frustrated by the poor referees, the people who are handling the VAR, that's who we're frustrated by because you still can't get it right when you've got no pressure. You're sitting in a room in Stockley Park looking at this incident time and time and time again and you're still coming up with wrong decisions. All we want is a fair decision. And I don't care about, you know, obviously I care about Chelsea because they're my club, but a fair decision for everyone. You know, it's not just Chelsea you get poor decisions. Clubs up and down the country are getting poor decisions. You know, if we get the fair decisions for everybody, then football will be a lot better, a much better game. So that's my rant over off my soapbox. So stick your comments in the comment section below and let me know your thoughts. Okay, I'll take care. I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.